Hey, 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 it's Brett back with some Photon Bolt, and this time I hope it's going to be a short video. We're going to cover shooting and triggers, so without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in our menu scene. Let's go ahead and head over to our game scene, and then, of course, all the Bolt entities are instantiated, so we actually want to head into our prefab menu, and our cube. So we want a shooting script, but before that, let's go ahead and make a bullet. So let's go up to this game object menu, game object, 3D object, and sphere is probably fine. You can see it there. Let's reset the transform on this sphere. So it's right there. looks good. And maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. That's a little bit small, but you get the idea. And rename it bullet and drag and drop this into our prefab menu perfect there's our bullet and just for good measure bam we have our bullet prefab with the bullet made let's head into our cube and add a shooting new script create an add when that loads i will go ahead and drag and drop this shooting script into our scripts folder just because i like being very neat and we can pop that bad boy open once it loads I always like to clear everything because I am a slight OCD freak and good and now we're ready to start coding for this video I'm just gonna make a really quick kind of bad shooting script but it should get the point across and that's all I'm really trying to do here so first we need a reference to our bullet prefab so let's make a public game object bullet prefab. Let's also make a speed for the bullet. So public float bullet speed. And lastly, from experience, I know we're going to want to shoot it from a certain point. Let's call that public game object muzzle. So the bullet will be shot out from that point. And now let's go attach everything. So save. Head back into the cube prefab, I already have mine up, so let's go to scene so we can see it. And this little blue arrow will be vector3.forward, and that makes it really easy to shoot. So let's put our barrel um, along this blue arrow. So cube, I'm going to create a, can be anything, I'm going to make a capsule maybe. That's way too big, let's scale it down, four, four. Four. Maybe we want 90 degrees on the Z axis. That's what I was going for. And okay, that looks bad, but of course, you guys can make everything look better. For now, that's kind of the muzzle that we're going to use. And right now, this is just the. I guess I'll name this barrel to make it clear. We're not actually going to instantiate the bullet on the barrel itself but we're going to make an empty object and call this the muzzle. And then I'm going to move the muzzle to the end of the barrel. And so now when we attach everything to the uh, shooting script, we can drag the muzzle right here. And now when it gets instantiated, it won't get instantiated in the middle of the barrel, but rather at the end where we want it. Now let's go and fill out the other variables we created. So we have bullet prefab and bullet speed. For bullet prefab, just head in and drag and drop the prefab we made earlier. And then bullet speed, um, let's just say five or something. You can always change that later. And we have our variables filled out. With those variables filled out, let's go ahead and add some functionality. So head back into the shooting script, add an update function. And then we're gonna say if input dot key code input dot get key rather and then key code dot space that's what we want we're going to say shoot but we don't yet have a shoot function so let's go and make one and I'm actually gonna make the function above the update it doesn't really matter but I think in this case uh, later on it will help uh, visualize it so private void shoot oops just like that and this error should go away perfect 
in our shoot function, we want to instantiate the bullet prefab. We want to instantiate it at the muzzle dot transform dot position. And we want to rotate it in the same orientation as the cube. So we say this dot transform dot rotation. Perfect. This will work because the shooting script is attached to the player itself. Of course, we want to make the bullet prefab do things, and we can't do that without a reference to it. So before the instantiate, let's say game object bullet clone, so we name it, and set that equal to what we just instantiated. After that, we can set the bullet clone's velocity equal to something, but if you see, we don't have access to the velocity uh, command, and that's because we need a rigid body to do it. So let's change this game object to rigid body, and then we can change this declaration to a rigid body as well, if I can spell it correctly. And now, as you see, the error goes away. And for the sake of this tutorial, uh, let's go ahead and use transform dot transform direction equal to a new vector three zero zero and bullet speed. So this will set the velocity of the bullet equal to zero zero and then bullet speed on the Z axis, which if you remember is vector three dot forward. So this will make the bullet shoot uh, whichever direction the player's facing, which is what we want. Of course, now that we changed the declaration to a rigid body, Unity is going to throw away our current attachment and we just need to reconnect it after we add a rigid body component. So physics, rigid body, and let's go ahead and disconnect gravity. Everything else is probably fine. Now that our bullet has a rigid body component, we should be able to drag it in just as well as before. Perfect. While we're on the cube prefab, let's go into the health script and either change this key code away from space or just comment out this state.health minus equal one because if you remember, we made our shoot key spacebar, and I want to be able to test it as many times without killing ourselves, and so that should be just fine. Okay, so I've built and run the game on both the client and the editor. If you want to do so, pause the video and do it now. Otherwise, you can just watch. So, if we shoot now, a lot of weird stuff happens. So, as you can see on the client, both cubes end up shooting a weird... There's a lot of problems, but for now, both cubes are shooting on the client, and neither are shooting on the on the other computer. Um, so let's fix that. So we need to do two important things to make that look a little bit better. The first is pretty easy. Let's just change this to get key down instead of get key. That'll make it so they spawn every time you press the key and release it instead of spawning a bunch as long as you hold the key down. And the next has to do with bolt. So let's go ahead and instead of deriving from mono behavior, derive from bolt dot entity behavior. And then it's attached to the cube, so we can just do i custom cube state like that. And the second is a pretty important line. We're going to say get key down space and entity dot is owner and basically what this means is pretend you're connecting to a game it doesn't matter if you're starting it or if you're joining it when we get spawned in we get spawned in through this network callbacks function right here and if you're the player that gets spawns in through this you will be the owner of whatever is instantiated so that's essentially how we solve the problem of if there are multiple players connected here and they all have the shooting script attached to them, we only want the shooting script to be called from the player that's actually pressing it. So if you're the one, pretend there's like one, two, maybe three players. If you're player two, only your script will be called because you'll have the if is owner requirement. If that doesn't make sense, which it might not, I highly, highly encourage you again to go check out 
the Photon website itself for maybe some better clarification. Right, so let's build and run. And now, as you can see, only one of them shoots and it doesn't look quite as spammy, but it still doesn't work for the other computer. We can fix that, so let's go ahead and do it. So right now, this is only getting called on one instance, which is a step in the right direction, but we need a way to tell the other instances that our instance is shooting. And to do that, we need to use a trigger. So let's go to Window, Bolt, Assets menu, head over to our custom cube state, and we need to add a new property. Let's call this shoot. And we need to make this a trigger, just like that. With that done, go ahead and hit the compile button. And with that done, head back over into our script. So with the shoot trigger added, we actually want to change this local shoot to state.shoot. Now this will call what's in the asset menu. So if we built and run, this actually nothing would happen. This isn't getting called. This is calling the trigger in the asset menu. And we need a way to detect when the trigger was called. And then once that trigger was called, then we can do a local function and it will work on every instance. The way we detect if something was called is by adding a callback script in the public override um, attached function, attached just like that. And then we say state dot on shoot. So when bolt detects that this trigger was called, we want to shoot. So now instead of directly calling this function, we call the callback function that's set in the attached method. And then when bolt detects that we called shoot, on every instance, it will call this shoot function. Okay, so I've built and run, and now fingers crossed, we can shoot and hooray, it comes up on both. It comes up on the correct computer, and it should, if you saw it kind of fly off the screen, it should work for both people, there it is. And if you want to synchronize the bullet spaces, just to be absolutely sure, you can make the bullet a bolt entity itself, and then just like the cube on the player, you can say in a bullet script, you could say state.transform equals this.transform, which should hard synchronize the bullet um, positions. But yeah, that uh, covers it. But yeah, that about covers it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, I think I'm going to cover animations, which also should be a relatively short video. And after that, I might get into some multi-camera one player joins and another player joins and they have their own little avatars might try to get into that i'm not sure but uh yeah thanks for watching also i made this game <laughs> if you want to see how i'll leave a link to my video down below i documented everything and yeah let me know what you think of that you guys are awesome and i'll see you next time bye